Hello, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. If you missed it, make sure you watch part one first, including Danny Last Call Castillo, and enjoy the show, guys. UFC 125, the promotion looked to book Jose Aldo, the inaugural 145-pound champion, his first title defense against Josh Grisby. On November 23, 2010, Aldo then pulls out of the fight due to a back injury, leaving the UFC to call upon Dustin Poirier for his UFC debut. Poirier stepped in and on New Year's Day of 2011 was viewed as a tune-up fight for the then 14-1 Josh Grisby, but the Louisianan disagreed. Over the course of 15 minutes, Dustin displayed very well-rounded striking and a significantly improved ground game to shock the heavy favorite via unanimous decision and put his name on the map in the new UFC's featherweight division. While Frankie Edgar and Gray Mater put on one of the best fights in the history of the UFC later that night, Dustin Poirier successfully made his UFC debut on the prelims. Following the victory over Josh Grisby, Dustin secured a decision win over Jason Young and a darts choke finish of Pablo Garza. This set him up for a fight at UFC 143 with an undefeated 3-0 record inside the promotion. Dustin saw not one but two opponents pull out of that fight, but a scrappy young 20-year-old named Max Holloway from Hawaii would save the day and step up to fight the Diamond that February. Holloway would come out swinging, but Poirier showed patience and picked his shots in close before taking the fight to the ground and working towards getting a triangle armbar finish from the mount position. He would then tell the fans that he is here to be a champion in his post-fight interview with Joe Rogan. Improving to an incredible 4-0 in the UFC, Dustin now becomes a hot commodity in the 145-pound division. Some would even don him as the next big thing. The media swarmed Dustin post-fight, and it was clear that this performance earned Dustin the largest fight of his career. The Diamond had his eyes set on one man specifically. May 15th, 2012. UFC on Fuel 3 would be headlined by the Korean zombie Chan Sung Jung and our very own Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Zombie would enter this fight with a 12-3 record, while Dustin would come in at 12-1. Both men would be nearing a shot at the featherweight king, Jose Aldo, but Dustin had said in previous interviews that he'd actually prefer the zombie first and then the title later. Ask and you shall receive, at least in this case for Dustin Poirier. Dustin was just a step behind the Korean zombie that night. His youth and less polished game was relevant against an elite opponent, and Poirier ended up being submitted in the fourth round. Not only did this fight win fight of the night, plenty of MMA media outlets had this as their fight of the year in 2012. In order to reach that next level, Dustin moved on from training under hometown hero Tim Credjuer to training in Florida at American Top Team. He'd get a first round finish over Tough 12 winner Jonathan Brookins before being slotted opposite of Cub Swanson in the middle of the most impressive streak of his career at UFC on Fuel 7. Seven. February 16th, 2013. Dustin Poirier finally felt ready to challenge for the UFC title, and this was going into February of 2013. Poirier told MMAJunkie.com that with a win over Cub Swanson, he felt he would be at the title or one fight away, even going as far as to say that if the UFC offered him a title fight, he'd accept it. This was a complete 180 from the times we've heard Dustin talk about titles before. Dustin finally felt ready, and all eyes were on this featherweight co-main event. In yet another barn burner, Dustin once again fell just short, losing a unanimous decision. Once again, Poirier just seemed a step behind for the majority of the bout, and the talent was there, but he looked like he needed more time and ultimately more experience. Although the Diamond thought he was ready for the big time, the then only 24-year-old still had a lot of room for growth. August 31st, 2013. After losing to Cub, Dustin finally got to square off with what at the time was a long-term friendly rival in Eric Koch. Eric Koch was kind enough to speak with us for this piece. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, he is a freestyle fighter. Standing 5 feet 9 inches tall, his official weight, 144 pounds. Fighting out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, here is the Eric Newbreed Koch! Uh, I'm Eric Koch. I've been a longtime MMA fighter. I started fighting when I was 16 years old. 32 now. 
32 now and uh, um, still, still going. You and Dustin had a history of respectfully wanting to fight one another. Uh, you guys both mentioned each other by name quite a few times. But can you recall the events that led to the two of you finally squaring off? You know, at the time, because it was it was still pretty fresh after the WEC merger and the UFC. And, I, and I'll take it back even just a little bit further. I remember we, we fought on the same WEC card. He fought another Iowa native, Zach McElroy. And I fought Francisco Rivera. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was the night. And I already, you know, I saw him and I already had people like before any of us or anybody knew really who we were. I had people like, man, you guys look a lot, uh, look a lot alike. You guys are like doppelgangers. And uh, it was one of those things where it's kind of like, okay, you got a couple young kids and you're being compared to somebody else. And it's kind of like, oh, I need to one up this guy. Right. I need to. I need to prove who's the real deal. And, the, the, you know, there was never animosity, but it, it was just funny because even through the WEC, that was kind of like an ongoing joke. Even at Rufus Sport, like me and Dustin are like doppelgangers, you know? So it was one of those things where I, I ended up fight. I was supposed to fight um, Cub Swanson, but he, he got replaced with a Sun Sal. I ended up fighting him, and then I ended up fighting Jonathan, Jonathan Brookins. And I know me and Dustin were both talking about each other. So I ended up fighting... Dustin finally we signed it because it kind of made sense it was a, it was a big deal for me it was one of those things though being in Milwaukee and fighting like a rival I felt like this was my rival out of the entire roster the the people that are brought up it's always me and him people comparing us so when we signed that 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 fight was a big deal to me and um you know we showcased so at the time I was, you know, I was thinking I got the kicks on this guy. I'm going to, I'm going to keep this guy at distance and I'm a, I want to chop him up. And in the first round, he did, he did a good job closing distance, hit me with a couple hard punches and he ended up uh, implementing wrestling, which I knew he had, but I thought, you know, between us, I thought we were going to stand. The craziest thing I take from that fight was when he took me down the first round, I had him in one of the tightest triangles ever. and. For me, every submission I've gotten a fight, I've known it in my head. When I had it, I had it. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this. This is done. It's almost like I was celebrating in my head um, before the fight was over. I was like, oh, I got him. I got him. Still to this day, I don't know how that guy fought out of that. But he did. And he told me afterwards, he was like, dude, he's like, one second, one second more the the way he got out of that the way he just he kind of toughened out of that right like he was gonna either go to sleep or or get out you know and getting out of that for me was so demoralizing because I'm used to like I, I love triangles usually when I get it there people aren't leaving and uh he got out of that and it was demoralizing as hell it was a fun fight you know um obviously I wanted to win but it was one of those ones where with us kind of having that not even beef but we kind of had that rivalry we had a good fight and after that man he's been nothing but courteous nothing but nice you know for the winner by unanimous decision dustin the diamond Boring. going into september 14, Dustin was once again on fire. Dustin was matched with a budding Irish star by the name of Conor McGregor. Although Conor wasn't anywhere near the star he is today, the UFC still had high hopes for the Irishman, and this fight was booked for UFC 178, originally supposed to be headlined by John Jones and Daniel Cormier. Poirier entered on an impressive three-fight win streak, while Conor entered with a 3-0 UFC record and 11-fight win streak in total. Something had to give. McGregor attacked Dustin verbally for the entirety of the buildup to this fight, and that visibly affected Dustin, as he has even gone as far to say he's never disliked someone as much as he disliked Conor McGregor going into their first fight. The emotions that McGregor invoked mixed with the picture-perfect striking of Conor on that night spelled doom for Dustin Poirier, who was TKO'd inside of two minutes. Dustin had clearly fallen in love with sticking inside the pocket, and it cost him. 
This would mark the first time Poirier would stop with strikes, and for many people, mark the end of Dustin's days as a real prospect. What this fight did in hindsight, though, helped take part in turning Dustin into the star he is today. After losing to Conor McGregor, the Diamond officially made the decision to jump up and wait to lightweight 155 pounds. Supposed to win tonight. I train hard. I, uh, I, 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 I owed it to my wife and to myself. And you know, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a big hit to me, man. I, this is my life, you know. And you weren't, you weren't gonna, you weren't gonna tap, man. You were just, you're just gonna go get put out. You were like, I, I mean, don't know. I, I felt it closing, and then, then he just kind of stopped it. I don't think I was out. And uh, in round two, you was do, I out? Uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and and what's it look like? Respect us and what I like about Dustin is um that guy has been put through the ringer like to get a title shot like how many wins how many times he has to put people out impressively um and he's not he's not trying to get there by talking you, you know it's 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 kind of like more of the old school approach like a, more of a martial artist approach and I come from tradition I mean early in um I think for it to like to actually like be a respect respectful sport and be respected, I think we we need more role models like that, and uh, so that's why I can't. I mean, I can't. You guys reached out for me to do this for for Dustin, and I didn't even think twice about it. Like I'm fighting the guy, having history with the guy, um, talk having some banter here and there, but I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the guy. You know, he, he, he presents himself very well. The, the organization he's got running that all the stuff he's doing, I, I stand beside it. It's awesome.